Exercise 10.3, solving quadratic equations. Quadratic equation is an equation with a variable raised to the second power. General form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It's this term right here, the x squared term, which makes this a quadratic equation. There are three ways that we can solve a quadratic equation. First and most efficient is by factoring. Always look to see if it's a factorable quadratic. If it is, that's going to be the quickest way of solving. Problem is, is not all quadratic functions are factorable. Second way, by the quadratic formula. If you can get really good at using the quadratic formula, these two methods, one and two, especially if you're not somebody that's really good at factoring, can be about the same as far as length of time it takes to solve. Third method, which we will not talk much about, is by graphing. But what's important for you to connect here is that if you solve a quadratic equation by graphing, what you need to understand is that the solutions to the equation are the same as the x-intercepts when we look at the graph. <clears throat> so that would be a way that we could solve a quadratic equation by simply looking at the graph, see where the x-intercepts are, those are the solutions to the equation. <clears throat> First two here, solve by factoring. So it tells you that these are factorable, so we're going to go ahead and factor them. The work that we've done previously with factoring trinomials, remember three terms into two binomials is how we are going to begin here. Numbers that multiply to be negative 2 and add up to be positive 1 are positive 2 and negative 1. Once you have a quadratic function factored and it is set equal to 0, your next step is to set each one of those factors equal to 0 and then solve each one of those individual factors. We get negative 2 and we get 1. Those are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. Second one, factor. Numbers that multiply to be negative 4 and add up to be negative 3 are negative 4 and positive 1. Once it's factored, set each factor equal to zero, continue solving. There are the two solutions to that quadratic. Third one, numbers that multiply to be positive one and add up to be two are one and one. Set each one of those factors equal to zero. Notice that both factors, in this case, are going to produce the same solution. So this quadratic equation has one solution at negative 1. Fourth one. <clears throat> Notice that this is now a degree 4 equation. However, because it's a trinomial that is in quadratic form, meaning that we have the same form as what we have in the other equations, we can still factor this. This time, the first times first has to multiply to be x to the fourth rather than x squared. So that's why instead of x, we have x squared here and here. We still need numbers that multiply to be 36 and add to be negative 13. Those are negative 9 and negative 4. Same step. Once it's factored, set each factor equal to 0. Once we do that, we have a little bit more work left to do, but not too bad. Add the 9 over. Finish solving for x. How do we undo squaring something? The opposite of squaring something is to take the square root. When we do that in an equation, we need to remember to consider the positive and negative solution. So from the first factor, we get plus or minus 3. From the second factor, take the square root. And we get plus or minus 2. So there's the four solutions to that equation. Second method, using the quadratic formula. 
There's the quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're going to use that to solve this first quadratic equation. Now, when we go to solve a quadratic equation, whether we're going to factor it or use the quadratic formula, we always want it written in descending order, meaning our squared term first, our linear term or degree one term second, and our constant term third. Okay, if we're going to factor just as we did on these previous four, notice that they are all four already in that form. So in this case, once it's in that form and you know you're going to use the quadratic formula to solve, all you need to do is identify what A is, what B is, and what C is. A is always the number right in front of the squared term. B is always the number in front of the X term. And C is always the constant term or the number by itself. Once you have identified those three, go ahead and plug directly into the formula. X equals opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. Once you've plugged a, b, and c in, the most common mistake that is going to be made in simplifying is right here underneath the radical. Do not forget order of operations. You must do this multiplication and this exponent before you worry about subtracting these two terms. So underneath the radical, negative 19 squared is 361. 4 times 6 times 10 is 240. Now that we've done the exponents and the multiplication, we can subtract those. We get 19 plus or minus root 121 over 12. Root 121, though, plug that into your calculator, is just 11. So we get 19 plus 11, which is 30, over 12. 30 divided by 12 is 5 halves. We get 19 minus 11, which is 8. And 8 divided by 12 is 2 thirds. So there's our two solutions. Second one we're going to look at here. Notice this equation now. We do not have everything on one side. We do not have it set equal to zero yet. So that's the first thing we need to do here. So I'm going to add the x over, and I'm going to subtract the 3 over, and we're going to end up with 2x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. You have to remember to do that before you plug into the quadratic formula, or you're not going to identify your values of a, b, and c correctly. So now a is equal to 2, b is 1, c is negative 3. Plug into the quadratic formula. x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Underneath the radical, do the exponent, multiply everything else together, we end up with 1 plus 24. Simplify, negative 1 plus or minus root 25 over 4, which is negative 1, the square root of 25 is 5 over 4. So now we have negative 1 plus 5, which is 4, divided by 4 is 1. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6 over 4 is negative 3 halves. And there's our two solutions with the quadratic formula. More quadratic equations here. Whether we are solving by factoring or quadratic formula, if you see a quadratic equation, meaning that you see something with an x squared, Always remember to get everything on one side set equal to zero, then decide whether you're going to factor or use the quadratic formula. 
So I'm going to subtract the x squared over 2x squared minus x squared. I'm going to subtract the 2x over negative 3x minus 2x. And I'm going to subtract the 18 over. And now we're left with that quadratic. Factoring, if you know how to factor, obviously is a little bit quicker. So let's look at this real quickly and see if we can factor it. Are there numbers that multiply to be negative 6 that add up to be negative 5? Yeah, negative 6 and positive 1. Take each of those factors now, set them equal to 0. And there's our two solutions. Okay, last one, distribute x. On this side, we have like terms, 2x plus 6x. It's quadratic. So we want to get everything on one side set equal to 0. When I subtract the 8x over, that cancels. And so now I just have x squared equals 36. And if we want to solve for x, we know we can undo a square, uh, something squared by taking the square root. So take the square root, square root of 36 in an equation is plus or minus 6.